everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to have some fun with a really pretty but really easy dishcloth pattern that you can make in no time. I really like this pattern because it has a nice texture to it. Um, if you happen to use the yarn that I used in this, it's a really nice co cotton with a touch of softness to it. And I really like the contrasting colors here, but you can um, use whatever colors you'd like. So we're going to start today with the dish cloth pattern, and then um, I'll put a link below for the dish towel pattern that is going to be a matching set. So I hope you enjoy this pattern and look for the dish towel pattern to come out soon. Let's take a look at the materials that you're going to need for this. You're going to want to use a good cotton yarn whenever you're doing things like dish rags or dish towels or things of that nature. So I'm actually using the Lion Brand Kobu. I actually prefer this to just a normal cotton because it's a blend of cotton and bamboo and it really gives a nice touch of softness to that. So this is really my preferred go-to cotton. Now, if you take a look at the back, this is a lightweight three yarn. Um, so you can do this with any cotton or cotton blend yarn that you prefer. You can even do it um, with a weight four. You just might need to make some adjustments with your hook or your sizing, depending on how big you want your, your uh, dish rag to be. So for me, I'm going to use the, use the Kobu uh, weight three. Now for this, I like to do a different color uh, border, kind of a splash of color in there. So I'm going to do the main dish rag in this, uh, I think they call it denim, yeah. This is the Kobu denim. And I'm also going to use a white to add a little a splash of color when we get to the border. You don't have to do that. You can do it all one color if you'd like, um, but pick whatever color or colors you want and um, you can use that. In addition to that, we're going to use a five millimeter crochet hook and you will need a tapestry needle and of course some scissors. So gather that information, those supplies together and we'll get started. So to start our dish rag, we're going to start with a chain. Now for me, I'm going to use 29. You can make this as long or as short as you want. However wide you want your dish rag to be is what you should start with here. The only requirement for this pattern is that you use an even number plus one. So for me, I wanted it to be 28, so I added one, it's 29. If you want it to be longer than this, like a 36, you would make it 37. It just has to be an even number and then you add one more at the end. So for row one, we're gonna go into the second chain from the hook and we're going to start with a single crochet. In the next stitch, you're going to do a double crochet. In the next stitch from there, you're going to do a single crochet. So you can see we're alternating between single and double crochet. Just keep alternating back and forth, single, double, until you get to the end. Your last stitch should be a double crochet. So at this point we have three stitches left. So I have a double crochet, a single crochet, and then as I mentioned in our last stitch we will have a double crochet. to 
be difficult there at the end. There we go. Okay. And that's the end of row one. You can see it goes back and forth between single and double, and that's alternating all the way across. You should have 28 stitches altogether around um, that row. So for row two, you're going to want to chain and turn. And if you remember, we ended in a double crochet. So in that first one, we're going to start with a single crochet right in that very next stitch where you have the chain, where you did the chain. Here's our single crochet, and in that you're going to do a double crochet. The next one was our double crochet, you're going to do a single crochet. So anywhere you have a single crochet, you're adding a double crochet. Anywhere you have a double crochet, you're putting in a single crochet. But if you just remember to start every row with a single crochet and end every row with a double crochet, you will always turn out with the right pattern there. So you're going to continue this all the way across row two. And again, ending on a double crochet. So start with single crochet, alternate between single and double all the way across. And then you will end with a double crochet at the end of row two. And that's your whole pattern for this, for the main body of the dish rag. What you want to do then is repeat row two over and over again until you get it to the length that you want. Now, when I did it, one of the things that's important to me is that I have a as perfect of a square as possible. I like my dish rags square. So I think I ended up with 22 rows total, if I remember correctly. Um, so somewhere around there in the 20s um, to go ahead and uh, repeat row two and then once you get to your desired length we can meet back here and talk about the border so go ahead and repeat row two you start with a single crochet end with a double crochet chain one and turn do that over and over again until you get to the length that you desire and then we'll talk about next steps with the border Now you can see I repeated those rows. I did mine about 22 times, I think I said. Um, I liked mine to be square. I mentioned that earlier. One of the things you can do to see how well you did from a square perspective is just fold it corner to corner and see if that um, matches your design there and if that's the right pattern or the right size for you but you can do however long you want it however big you want it um, like I said for me that was just 22 um, 22 rows I believe it was so now we're going to work on the border so the first thing we want to do is um, we finished with that double crochet from the end of that row we're going to chain one and we're going to turn and for every corner, we want to have three stitches in the corner. That helps to make sure that you have a nice turning corner and not something that'll fold over on itself or anything like that. So in this first stitch, we're going to do three single crochets right there. And that'll be our, our kind of our corner stitch for here. So one, two, and three. Then go ahead and single crochet all the way across. You're not going to alternate single, double, or anything like that this time. You're just doing a single crochet all the way across. When you get to the next corner stitch, you're going to want to do three single crochets in that corner stitch. When you get there, stop, meet me back here, and we'll talk about going down the side. So I did single crochets all the way across that row. I'm to my last stitch of this row and I'm going to do three single crochets in that corner just like we started with. So there's your three single crochets for the corner. Now we're going to go across the side and unlike single crocheting in the top or in the bottom, there's no really distinguishable place to put your stitches. 
And what's important is not only spacing them evenly, but also the number of stitches. So we know we have 28 across, we, and since mine is a square, I'm going to focus on doing 20, uh, 27 across because 28 is going to be the corner. So 27 across as evenly as possible. Um, if you do like too many, you'll start having like a, a, a ripple effect. And if you want it to be a nice wash cloth that lays flat, that rippling across the side might not work for you. If you want the little ruffle, you know, go, go for it, put extra stitches in. Uh, but I want mine to lay flat, so I'm actually going to focus on putting 27 stitches evenly across. A couple things you can do to kind of help with the placement. So if I fold mine in half, and I know I want to do 27 and a half, I know I want to be at 14, about the halfway mark. So I'm going to eyeball that, that halfway mark of where I want to be at the number 14. The other thing I will mention is that when you're going across, you want to kind of space them from the top of the stitch all the way across as evenly as possible. Make sure that you're always going under two stitches, two threads instead of one, so that that's not pulling out. So as you go along, look for a good space to put that where you can actually go under two stitches, almost like you would when doing these in the top or the bottom, but you're trying to find those along the side. So go ahead and, and put your single crochets all the way down the row here. Like I said, evenly spaced, finding spots where you can have them go under two threads and get that all the way across this side. When you get to the corner, you're going to do three single crochets in the corner, just like we did in the other two corners. You're going to do your single crochets all the way across the bottom, three single crochets in the last corner, and then again, evenly space your single crochets across the row of the side. And then we will meet back here where we started with those three single crochets and I'll tell you what I'm going to do next. You don't need to if you don't want to, but I'm going to switch colors here and give it a little bit of color for the next round of, um, of the border. And I'll tell you how we're going to do that when we get back. So go ahead and finish up single crocheting all the way around and I'll meet you back here where we started. Okay, so I went ahead and did the border all the way around with the three single crochets in every corner. And I am back to the beginning where we started. So here are those three single crochets in the corner. What we need to do now is join this last single crochet that we did to the top of the first single crochet in the corner where we started. Now, one thing I should say is you don't need to do the border. If you don't want to put a border on, you don't have to, you could be done. Um, but um, I would at least recommend one row around because I think it gives kind of a neat polished look around the sides. But again, you don't need to do that. Um, I'm going to switch colors to white to give it a pop of color around. You don't need to do that either. If you want to put a second row on or third row, whatever you want to do, and you don't want to put um, a different color on, you don't need to do that. But if you want to continue and you want to switch colors, this is what I'm going to recommend. So, um, like I said, we're going to join it to the first, there is the first stitch of the three in the corner. So normally what we would do is a slip stitch and you'd um, yarn over and pull this through both here and there. But since we want to switch colors, we want to actually join it with the new color. And that'll put the color change in the right spot. If you join it first with the blue and then switch colors, it'll look like it's in the middle of a stitch. So you want to make sure that before you finish your stitch, you actually switch your colors if that's what you want to do. So if you can see it's been joined, 
just like normal, and now the new color is coming through instead. So that's really the appropriate way to switch that. So we are in the corner, and we are now going to do the single crochets, but if you recall, we had three single crochets here, one, two, three. We only wanna do the three in the center, the actual corner stitch, not these two side stitches. So when we start this, and I want to make sure this is pulled tightly here. And you'll go back and weave these in and make them the right um, tension and all that, but just kind of want to make sure they're starting here. So what we want to do is a single crochet in that first stitch. This is the first of the three in the corner. All right. Then in the middle, that's the actual corner, we want to do three single crochets, one, two, three. Here's the third of that corner from before, just a single crochet. And then you're going to single crochet all the way around this uh, washcloth. When you get to the corner, again, just like we did before, identify where your three single crochets are. There they are. I'm trying to get this out of one, two, three. It's just that middle one right there that you want to do the three single crochets in. So do that all the way around and I'll meet you back here um, at the beginning where we started and we'll talk about next steps. Okay, so I have finished with the white and I went all the way around doing single crochets all in every single crochet and then the three single crochets in each corner and I'm now back here to the beginning. Now if you want to end here you can end here you can just do a slip stitch to join into that first stitch where we started and call it done. Um, I'm actually going to switch back to the blue. Um, if you recall I didn't uh, fasten that off I left the blue here so I want to kind of bring it back up to the right height for me to switch on over. So let me show you how I do that. I have one more single crochet left here. I'm going to go ahead and put my hook through there and I am going to just take that blue that we have down here and I'm going to wrap it around this hook and it's going to kind of help bring it up to the right level because I want to get it up back up here without it crossing over white etc. So it's up there and I'm going to do my last single crochet and you can see there it is it's kind of up here now in this area so I can continue now in blue. So if you recall the way to do that we're going to slip stitch into the top or the first stitch from that round but this time I'm going to use the blue and I am going to do my slip stitch with the blue because I want to go to the next row. So we're done with the white now. I'm going to leave kind of a long tail that I can use and, and put in later, weave in later, but at least this way it gets the white out of the way for me a little bit. Okay, so I got that out of the way. And now I'm going to go ahead with um, my blue finishing up. This will be my last row. So I would like the final blue row to be a little bit um, taller than this white row. I think it'll give it a nice little offset. So I'm actually going to do half double crochets all the way around, including three half double crochets in the corner instead of single crochets. If you're not sure how to do a uh, half double crochet, I do have a tutorial on that. I'll leave that in the description box if you need that. Um, so once again, let's go back and look at the corner that we did here. Here are our three um, stitches in the corner. Remember, we only want to do the three single, the three half double crochets in that very center. So that's the center of the three. So I'm gonna go ahead and start and put a half double crochet in the first one. Now I'm to the middle one there. I'm going to do three half double crochets in that corner stitch. Okay. 
And now I'm going to continue on doing half double crochets all the way around in every single crochet from the previous row. When you get to the corners, as usual, find your very corner stitch. Put three half double crochets in that very corner stitch until you get all the way back to the beginning. Now, I should say, if you don't want to do half double crochets, you don't have to do half double crochets. You can just do single crochet. I'm just telling you what I'm doing because I like the look of it. But, you know, be creative. You can use whatever kind of stitch that you want or try, you know, what you'd like. And if you don't like it, it's easy enough to just take it out and try something else. So um, go ahead and do your last row. Go all the way around, making sure you're putting the three half double crochets in each corner. And then I'll meet you back over here and we'll finish off. So this is what it looks like with the half double crochet all the way around. You can see it's just slightly taller than the single crochet that I did in white. And I think it has a nice little offset there, making it a little taller. Um, at least that's kind of my preference. But again, you know, be creative. You can do however you'd like to do it. Um, it's totally up to you. So that is the wash rag. All you need to do now is like we've done in the past, just go ahead and join your, with a slip stitch to the first stitch there and finish that out. Um, when I um, fasten off, I like to do just one more, uh, one more chain. I'm just gonna cut a little length here so I have some to weave in. And then I will do just one chain and pull through. And that will be the end of that. I'm going to weave that in. I'm going to weave my uh, strings from the white in there. And then that's from my starting chain. And then this is done. So I hope you like this. I also have a matching dish towel coming out that will match up with this set. Um, it'll be very similar to this with similar um, stitches and all that nice little uh, texture to it. So I hope you stick around and find that video that will be coming out soon as well. If you liked this video, please take a minute to subscribe and like. And if you have any questions or suggestions on future videos, please put a comment um, in, in the comment box below. I really appreciate you watching. Thanks everyone.